As in the previous video of ASP.NET, we have already discussed about the output caching. Here in this video, we will add one more concept that is SQL dependency in output caching. Basically, we have set a particular duration for output cache and in, in that particular duration, whenever a client will refresh the page or make a request again, the data will be brought from the cache memory. But if that particular data is got modified in the database, then logically a client must get the latest information. So here in this video, we will observe like if within that particular duration of output cache, a data in database got modified, then we will retrieve it from the database itself. That is the freshest copy of that data. So let's see the implementation of SQL dependency in the output cache. So here in this particular page, as you can see, I have already implemented the output cache for the duration 20 and I have taken the grid view. What I'm doing with grid view is I'm taking a data from the database from the table named TBL employees and I'm populating that in the data set and then I'm setting this data set as the data source for this grid view. So let's execute this and see whether I'm getting the records or not. So as you can see here, I'm getting all the records from the database. So now what I'll do, I'll just come to the database here and we'll do some changes out here. For example, I'm just putting this last name of this ABCD as XYZ. So here you can see there is a change but now after that for 20 seconds it will not be getting anything from the database like here I am setting the gender as M now if I will refresh you see that M is not available here so I'll have to wait for 20 seconds so that the database will be requested again and then I'll be getting that changed value as here you can see I have just made the change in the database with the gender M and here when I'm refreshing now since the 20 seconds probably is passed so I can see there's a change similarly if you've changed any particular field out here you will not get the changes here instantly so this is somewhat a drawback with the SQL dependency so this is somewhat a drawback with the output cache that even if there is a change in the database, a user has to wait for that particular cache duration to get the latest data. So what I want here, as soon as there is any change in the database, whether there is a duration of output cache is over or not, I should get the data from the SQL server itself. So let's see what all we have to do for performing that operation. So first of all, we'll have to come to the command prompt of Visual Studio. So here I'll come to the developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2015. Here I'll get a utility named ASP.NET underscore RegSQL. Here, first of all, if you are going to register any uh, ASP.NET application, you'll have to do the login. So if you want to go for the Windows authentication, you can pass hyphen E or if you want to go for the user uh, SQL authentication, you can go for hyphen U specifying the username and then hyphen P specifying the password. Then you will have to specify like what all you want to do. Like you want to enable table caching as well as the database caching. For that hyphen ED for enable database caching and then space hyphen ET for enabling table caching. And then you will have to specify the name of the table and database. So here you will have to specify like hyphen D and then my DB is the name of the database and then hyphen T with the table name like name is TBL underscore employees. So let's enter. So first of all it is enabling the database SQL cache dependency. So it is showing you an error like enable to connect. Okay, because I forgot to pass the server name, I just passed the username, password, database name and table name, but I didn't specify the server location. So for that, I'll have to pass hyphen S and then you can pass the name of the server or IP address. So here the name is tutorials point for my machine. 
So let's execute it again and here you can see enabling the table ca database caching and enabling table caching for SQL cache dependency. This is finished. Now let's see the changes which are there in the database. So here if you'll come to the object explorer, let's refresh this one. And here you can see the ASP.NET underscore table name is there, SQL cache tables for change notifications. Means whenever there will be a change, this table will be notified. Now this is how your SQL server is configured. Now let's see how to make the changes with the ASP.NET application. For that, I'll come to the web.config right here and inside this we will get something called system.web and inside this I'll start passing the tag names and here I'll get something called caching. Inside this I'll have to pass SQL cache dependency out of which I'll have to specify a couple of things. First is enabled that is true and then the poll time. Poll time is basically the time interval in milliseconds in which the database will be checked that whether there is a change or not. So here I have set that 2000 milliseconds that means in every 2000 milliseconds the application will go for the database to check that whether there is any change in or not in that change notification table. Then after that I'll have to specify the database in which I, ha I have to do this operation. So the name of the database is mydb in this case and the connection string which will connect you to this particular database is right here mydb connection string. So I'll specify this out here. So I think the things are done. So let's execute it coming to the index.html, index.aspx then let's execute. So here again I have the data. Let's refresh this and let's come to the database to make any changes like here. I'll do the change in the last name of this employee. Alright, so let's make the changes. Changes are done. Here it will be reflected but now after this whenever I'll start making any changes. Let's say I'm coming here and changing this employee contact number. I'll come here and again and here when I'll refresh this you can see there's a change in this particular data. So this is how you can configure the change notification table in the database and then you can come to this uh, web.config file to make the changes which will be compatible for the SQL dependency in your ASP.NET application.